Oops, hang on. <laughs> it jumps in. <clears throat> Hi, I'm, I'm interested. If I'll do the microphone in a moment. I'll plug it in as I'm going. Hi, welcome to episode 701. Hit my son yesterday, forget what I'm doing. Okay, um, welcome to episode 701. The topic today is um, what, do you, what do you really want? And some powerful tools to help you find out. So, um, <laughs> sorry, I didn't plug in my microphone ahead of time, so I'm like, let me plug it in. So, excuse me a second, whilst there be a bit of a crackle. Hold on. <coughs> I should be, should be louder and clearer now. So, thanks for watching. Glad to have you here. Um, again, episode 701. <laughs> Started without the microphone, that was silly. Um, and the top again is, do you know what you really, what do you really want and powerful tools to help you get there? Okay. Hi, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my broadcast. Let me introduce myself so you know what I'm about. I am a, <laughs> a best-selling author, inspirational speaker who gets it right once in a while. And I'm a passionate champion for the divine, divine feminine. And I help women create balance in love, life and business because I'm so passionate about this work. And also what inspired these talks starting over two years ago called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. I abbreviate it now to MFTM in the front end to make it more room for the title. And so I've done these talks for a while and that's why, that's why I'm now episode 701. And the topic today has been bugging me for a while. Because what I'm aware of is that people... I'm going to say this. People claim to know what they want, but oftentimes, that, uh, oftentimes there's two things going on, two conflicting things going on. One of the things is they're asking for what they want, but it's not what they really want. It's actually what they believe they can have, and that's a piece I'll talk about in a second. The second thing is, is what they're asking for what they really want is actually to avoid something or to produce a result they think they want. Let me break that apart. Hang on, there's a third one. I think. Let me talk about it and see where it goes to because there's about a few things I'm unpacking as I go along. And by the way, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, these are always done without any script, <laughs> as you can tell, usually spontaneously. Um, this is on Facebook Live first, then goes on to YouTube later on. They'll give you the links about that at the back end. And let me just dive into the topic. So, do you know what you really want? Or what do you really want? First of all, Having clarity about what you want is a key focus to get you where you want to go. If you don't know what you want, you don't really care where you're going, then cruising along is, is fine and life goes on. But for most people, that's not what they're not really the, the focus. They sort of think they have some dreams or vision of what they want. Now, one of those things is they have a vision or an image of what they want that is either unrealistic or doesn't satisfy what they're really looking for. Because something I learned a long time ago in a, te in a, in a training I took many, many years ago, was reminded about it recently, is when you are asking for something, for example, um, you want a new house, for example. Great, you want a new house. The question is though, what is the experience, the feeling, the energy of that that you really want? Maybe you want to feel more secure, more safe, having a, a house that is your own. Maybe you want to have a different sense of home than you had before. All these things are things you can access right now. Yes, you can access them right now because these are feelings, these are experiences energetically that you can take on before you get there. And I'm saying this is because, I'm jumping around, I'm realizing where I'm going now. Okay, that's what's coming through. Okay, one of the courses I offer called Attract the Man You Want has some embodiment exercises within it. I'll put a link in the comments at the end so you can see what it is and check it out for yourself. But the thing is, one of the key elements is it for me in my work, and I talk about with these clients, is it's not just, okay, I wanna have this, this, and this, out there energy. You want to take the energy and put it inside, embodiment energy. So if you are saying, um, try to think, say I'm looking, I want to get I want to get a nice car. What is the experience or feeling you want to have by having that nice car? For me, if I was looking at a new car, it would be to have the freedom and mobility to do what I want when I want it. Great. So if that's what I really want, what's the feeling underneath it I'm looking for? The feeling I'm looking to experience, that feeling I want to take on. I want to feel free. Well, I can have freedom by going and walking, going for a walk on the street. I can have freedom by just simply doing something that I want to do for, because I want the freedom to do so. It isn't necessarily having the car is the direct uh, cause of that feeling. In fact, sometimes it's the other way around. The feeling is the direct cause of the actual object, the intention. So having a sense of what I'm really looking for as a feeling, an embodiment experience, 
makes it more attainable to have that vehicle, that that desire, that dream, because it's almost like I'm t I'm trying on for size. I'm 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 in a way I don't say faking it until I make it, but it's kind of like putting the feeling on first. So then when I resonate with it, it becomes more attractive. And in the in my course, attract the man you want for the ladies. Although maybe men can do it too if they if they want if they're looking for a, a gay relationship. I'm just thinking, it's designed for women anyway, because it's an attraction energy. And so having a vibrational frequency of what you're attracting by feeling in the embodiment of that so you know what it feels like makes it much easier to recognize it when it shows up that's a powerful place a powerful tool to attracting what you really want that's one aspect secondly and this is one of the most subtle levels is that when you want to attract sorry when you want to have achieve a, attain a certain result to get something oftentimes that's because you think that's what you need it isn't really a heartfelt desire. It's more of a societal standard that you have to achieve and atten attain. Maybe it's to have a certain rank in your job, in your own company. Maybe it's to have a certain relationship situation where you should have, be married and settle down with kids. You should be married and settle down with kids. It doesn't move your heart. But it's what you've been trained for years to think you should have. And when you settle and have kids and get divorced 10 years later, you don't really look back and feel like that was the best decision you made. Because the wiring is set up or should say the society is set up to present you with goals and things you should do, should do, achieve and have to fit in, to succeed, to attain a certain status. But again, it's not what your heart desires necessarily. Now, if your heart desires match what your mind is focusing on, that's good news. That's actually a way of bringing your focus together, which is said in the first part, because you're actually creating a feeling level and then you have steps to take from that point forward to make happen, manifest, attract those things you want to actually feeling, have the feeling for, aligned with, the feeling for aligned. I think that makes sense. <laughs> so there's two pieces in this. One of this is really getting clear about the feeling beforehand so you can become energetically aligned to where you want to go. The second part is to really get clear as to what you're really going for. Is it really what you really, is it what, I said really 17 times, is it what you really want to have? Because sometimes what you're looking to have, when you really get it, it's like, is this all there is? Maybe it's certain experiences, maybe it's certain objects. I know when I had gotten certain things in my life, physical things, once I had it, it was kind of like, oh, two weeks. I mean, I remember as a kid, well, sometimes, let me say this, a couple of times I remember, um, I'm trying to remember I mean, a couple of things I had as a kid as presents I remember I was very grateful for but sometimes I remember as a kid getting things that was like I really was hoping to get it and when I got what I wanted it was like that's all there is so some of us have this um, wiring programming belief system that we have to have a certain achieve a certain result get certain things so having the latest smartphone could be one of those yes for me personally I'd love to have a newer smartphone because I want a better camera for the videos I do and for the pictures I take but the phone I've got works fine. So if I don't have it right now, it's okay. But the thing is, it's not like I must have it to fit in because I know at a certain point in time with the, and it's interesting because I, I haven't been an Apple fan for years. I was, I got in on the first iPhone when it came out and I watched next models coming out and I saw a lot of people who were jumping on the newest model every single year, even though the contracts were usually two years long. They were breaking the contract, getting another phone, breaking the contract, another phone, two year contract, one year renewal. Personally, I actually found in that place that I was not in such a hurry. Usually I want to have the latest and greatest. It was kind of the thing I was caught up in the trap of. That was kind of one of the modern society rules. You've got to have the latest and greatest of everything. Latest computer, latest phone, latest clothes, latest whatever it is, latest car. I've actually found for myself nowadays, I'm actually more comfortable getting, getting, getting there later in a way. Because I'm realizing what I really want is a feeling of enjoying what I have more than getting the latest thing that I need to enjoy. Subtle difference there. The wiring we have, the programming that we take on, sometimes overrides our real desires and willingness to have what we want. So one of the tools I teach in, in the course I talked about before and also in my new course I'm offering is a lot about getting back to your heart, to realign to yourself, to connect into that place inside that knows better than we do up here to focus on where we want to go and attract what we really want to have. This is a shift of mindset. Actually, it's a shift down, so to speak, from head to heart. 
because our mind carries all the wiring and the beliefs and the programming of what we think we should have based on society's rules and what we've been told so many times we believe it and also if you watch if you read magazines with ads in them or you watch tv with ads the imprinting of those things you should have because society keeps telling you, you should have them i should say the marketers keep telling you, you should have these things but when you connect in de inwardly to your heart it's a much clearer cleaner and more accurate reflector of what you really want so when you're starting to wonder what you really want to have that's where you want to check in first you may say you know i'd love to have an amazing relationship however and this is another part of the unpacking if your heart was wounded in past relationships your heart may not be ready for that yet so sometimes saying well i have an amazing relationship because you think you should have that because everyone else around you is getting married for example if you are still carrying the wounds from the last three relationships where you got wounded hurt and upset maybe you don't want to rush into that next one quite so easily maybe that's a good sign to do some inner work to heal that first and that's the thing is that it's your heart that knows better than your mind does nine times out of ten actually 99 times out of 100 i would say we are so in um i'll say infected that was an interesting turn of phrase why not we're so infected by the marketing ads out there in the world we sometimes think we should have things that we don't really want but we've heard it so many times or seen it so many times in the media coming at us that we believe that's what we want that's the power of advertising which is really propaganda in some ways for things that we don't really need the latest and greatest smartphone the newest model of the car um the right place to live the right clothing all these different things but the reality is <laughs> The greatest powerful tool of all is learning how to be totally aligned to your heart's values and to enjoy being who you are, where you are right now. One of the biggest things I think about this whole journey is that we tend to keep feeling impatient, that we'll feel okay when something happens, when we have that other relationship, when we have that new car, when we have that new promotion, all these different things, when we have, then we'll be happy. So we're chasing happiness out there perpetually avoiding the fact that we can have it right now we can be happy right now because we don't need anything to be happy happiness is a state of being a choice we make inside that if you have the ability to breathe air to take a step to drink water to you know all these different simple things you can be happy now i talked um yesterday the day before about the gratitude jar i keep part of one of the things i teach in my in my courses and I do, I do it myself. And in the gratitude jar, it's a physical anchored visual, because I see it, reminder that I have a lot to be grateful for. You know, I've been doing it since January, so I've got basically four, just over four months worth of um, gratitude slips stuffed in there. And that, for me, is a way of keeping tuned in to what I can be happy about and what I'm grateful for now, even when certain things I don't have in my life right now, like that latest smartphone or the newest car or a house in the country or different things. Yes, I do have certain desires that I want to manifest, create, have, have happen, achieve, whatever things are down the road. You know, they are. Okay, Mary, yes, you're happy right now. Joy pervades you every moment. Exactly. The thing is, there are things that we like to have and experience. I know, for example, for myself, I'd love to get myself a car. I don't have one at the moment. But it doesn't, it's not, it's not the be or end of my life. You know, my life is not emotionally based upon having a car or not having a car it's an inconvenience not having one but I'm also grateful for the public transportation for my bicycle for walking for Uber and Lyft all these different things that make getting places still work and at some point in time I will have a car that's simple as that but it's not like I'm it's not the thing that keeps me like focused I'm, I'm not going to be happy until I have the car because a lot of people people you know are um, happiness dependent meaning that they're only happy when there's certain things in place Again, when they have that next thing that they've been pursuing because what they have now is not enough. They're not satisfied with what's now. They're going to have what's next. And they're never happy. That is, unfortunately, probably about 80% of our population has that cycle going on. For me personally, I believe that you start from happiness and then you expand from there. And that is a shift that most people aren't really talking about right now. But I am. Part of what I've been talking about recently Indeed, Mary, yes, our self-value can't be based on things. Absolutely true. This is the thing as well. Because that's part of, <laughs> that's part of this course that I'm, that I'm uh, polishing and refining and launching called Coming Home to Yourself. Because when you come home to yourself, 
He learned to appreciate and love yourself and all the things that I teach in it. Your self-will, self-joy, self-supported happiness is automatic. And then everything else out there are just simply things to play with. It makes life much more freeing because you're not then dependent upon something or somebody to make you happy. That, that dependency thing I talk about a lot, Codependency, as I said, as, is, as it's called technically, is not just about relationships. We can be codependent on the television. We can be codependent on outside things happening. When, we don't, when money's not working the way we want, we can be very upset by that because money's not working for us. Excuse me. So we have a codependent relationship with it. So basing, as, as you said, Mary, when we, uh, our value can't be based on things, but when we base our happiness on things, you're going to get in trouble because those things don't always go the way you want situations circumstances jobs whatever it is and to have a clear understanding that your happiness is not about that it's about you you can do it internally then you get free and freedom is for me i think one of the biggest things that we can achieve because we don't have to go anywhere to do it it's innate in us already there's um um Sorry, it was Mary. So what, what you really want is to not have thoughts in your head bring you down. That's part of the that's part of the practice. You know, I've been doing this work for a long time and I'm and I'm doing okay with it most of the time, but sometimes sometimes there's that little voice in the head and I talk about I talked about this one a couple of days ago. If you does yourself talk talk back. Because it's true, we do sometimes have a lot of thoughts in here that don't necessarily agree with what we really want. They don't really agree with what we feel. We don't feel aligned to that. And so the challenge is well, not the challenge, the opportunity, I'll phrase it that way. The opportunity is to catch ourselves when we're doing it. Because until, I've said this before many times about how awareness is so important, is if we can be aware enough to catch those thoughts that are running through our head automatically, for me, what the, <laughs> for me, one of the latest things happening, <laughs> okay, for me, one of, the, one of the more recent things going through my head automatically is because I've been very immersed. Um, for those of you who are not interested in this stuff, it probably won't make sense to you, but I went and saw the Avengers Endgame on Sunday, and then saw Game of Thrones two days ago, the big uh, episode three, no spoilers. But so the music from both of those shows keeps running through my head and scenes from both of them keep running through my head. That's because we are very, as, and that's just a modern example, but we are all, all caught up in programming that comes in from outside. Now that was intentional on my part, but it's very much in my awareness. So I, see, I, so I just get glimpses and reminders like, oh, remember that scene from the movie or that, action, that scene in the show. That works too meaning that that can influence us as well. So choose what you watch in terms of content, movies, TV shows, just as much. I'm grateful for the fact that most stuff that's recorded on TV can fast forward through the commercials, so we can skip them completely. Because that sort of media, television, commercials, and even the news, can be very imprinting on our awareness of things we don't really want. But we get printed enough times we start believing it's true. That's a whole other path I'm not going to go down right now because that's a big conversation about, about uh, propaganda and, and messaging stuff. Anyway, so I hope this has made some sense that you can have what you want, but it starts really from within. Having the internal alignment and heart-centered listening to yourself can give you the power to really have, choose the feelings first so then you can go out and do what you want in the world. It's one of the most powerful things. Hi, Martin. What do you say? Thanks for the reminder grateful for all the places that remind you oh yes that's one yes <laughs> so martin does teach yo uh, laughter yoga um you do, it, you do it monday hang on there's space at agape on mondays now at the savan that's cool okay so monday night 7 30 30 well i normally don't let people promote in my broadcast but what the hey this one's fair so um thank you martin for that and yeah it's true it's like that's another thing you can do is if you don't feel happy all the time Go find things that give you joy, whether it is going to laughter yoga or it's watching a comedy show or it's playing with kids. Find ways to shift your own energy because, again, alignment to your heart is key, as I mentioned earlier. And if you don't feel necessarily the juice, the joy, the celebration, you can actually have more stuff. You have more things come up. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Mary, so you, you picked up what dreams may come. Robin Williams, that was a great movie. You want to write us some quotes from that, some sage statements. What Dreams May Come was a very interesting movie. Um, one of my friends actually produced, produced it, directed it, produced it, I think. So yeah, it's a good movie. Um, anyway, I'm getting off track, but stay focused, I wanna wrap this up. <laughs> so I said I'm gonna put links in the comments. Uh, one I mentioned at the beginning, Attract the Man You Want for the Ladies Looking for Love. 
in all the wrong places. I give a product to help you get find love in the right places. Um, also, I'll put the link into my new course because that's coming up and I want to make sure people can find out more about that. And if you want to get some more help generally in this area, I'll put a link to the Having a Discovery session with me so you can talk to me and find out more about what I can help you with. So with that, I thank you for watching. Um, I think that's everything. Um, this is my Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on Facebook Live, my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. Replay is on uh, my business page, which is barryselby.author. Also on my YouTube channel, which is also called Barry Selby. Please subscribe to that. And that's Messages from the Masculine is the playlist. Um, this topic I just, I'm just picking at and signing with. So if you've got any questions, thoughts about this, please let me know in the comments here or on YouTube. If you want to show anybody, do that as well. And again, check out the links I'm putting in the comments because they may be of assistance to you. Um, that's it, I think. Thanks for being here. Thanks for the love. Appreciate you being with me and for the comments and interaction. I will see you again tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Take care of yourselves. Bye.